Well, I want to welcome you to the First Church Podcast here. I am with uh, Danny Lopez. And uh, Danny, go ahead and um, tell me the name of your ministry, because I will pronounce it wrong. <laughs> it's uh, Ministerios Buena Vista. Okay, I, might, I could probably could have gotten that right. Yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's not too bad, but uh, um, I'm, I'm glad to be talking with Danny here. Danny has uh, been a friend of mine for a while. We were youth ministers together in uh, Alabama, and uh, he's just an awesome guy. And uh, moved to Guatemala in 2010, I believe. Right, right? it was 2010. Uh, and uh, I had the, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to bring your first group that you hosted, a uh, bunch, <laughs> bunch of youth uh, down, and uh, it was it was just a wonderful experience. And I've been, we try to try to get down occasionally since and bring groups down because you do such a good job. I think in your ministry uh, and you model Christ really well uh, to people. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but um, go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself just to kind of back up real quick here that this podcast and, and these interviews, we're just highlighting people in our church that we support um, and uh, as a church. And so um, Danny is one of those missionaries, but Danny, tell us where you're located. All right. Um, we're in uh, Guatemala. It's um, a little village called San Pedro Las Huertas, which is very close to uh, Antigua, Guatemala. And Antigua is about an hour from the capital, which is Guatemala City. Um, and we've um, this December, we will celebrate 10 years of being here in country full time. Wow. wow. Yeah, long time. That is, it's time flies, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So tell people, tell people what you spend most of your time doing. Okay. Um, well, I came from a course, a course, a, a youth ministry, youth pastor background. Um, so when we first came here, we um, didn't really have an idea. Didn't really know. We just knew that God called us to Guatemala. Um, so we, we knew we were going to do something with youth. So we started focusing on, on having some youth here at the house. Um, of course, we were in a different house then. Um, we couldn't speak any Spanish whatsoever. So that was, uh, baby steps. Um, it took, uh, you know, a couple of good years to, um, learn the language in the streets because we didn't, um, I think Kim took five total weeks of language school and I took two. So, uh, our, our Spanish was picked up in the streets, but we work, uh, we work a lot with youth. Um, right now I'm, I'm co pastors at our church um for the for the youth um and so i'm i'm teaching them every other week uh, right now i've been teaching every week for this about the whole virus time the whole quarantine because the the other uh pastor was in the united states with his wife he's guatemalan um but i, I really enjoy that we do youth camps each year can't do one this year of course but uh it's just been a blessing to to continue to work with youth that's where my heart's always been um, youth and children, and that's uh, that's where we're we're still working. Um, we also have feeding centers, uh, feeding center programs that are sponsored by a once a year auction in the United States in my home church, um, and they support enough um, at that auction to pay our cooks and pay for the food for the entire year. Um, for those, we've had three feeding centers. Um, Right now, we're only running one, and we just started it four weeks ago now, about four weeks. And a lot of this has to do, of course, you guys understand with the COVID virus and stuff, it um, completely shut down our ministry. Um, Guatemala was, was quarantined um, really, really strict. Um, we had a six o'clock curfew at night. Uh, first it was four, then it was six, and then at the end it was nine o'clock. Um, and on Sundays, you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't leave your house. Um, so it, uh, our lawyer here in Guatemala advised us to close everything. So uh, we are, he's now told us we can start opening back up gradually. So we opened up our, uh, we call our number one feeding center, which was our first one, which um, you've been to, and that's uh, San Cristobal Abajo, up on the mountain. Yeah. And we're having about 60 kids per day right now. 
Oh, wow. And they, we didn't have that before there. We had about 30 maybe. Um, but these kids are just, you know, bored out of their minds. They're hungry for attention. Um, so we're giving them Bible each day. Um, I'm teaching four days a week and Carlos is still with me. He's teaching one day a week. Um, and we're giving them a, a great meal each day. And the first couple of weeks, it was, it was strange because these kids could not eat their food because they're, they haven't been used. Their stomachs have shrunk. Um, they're not getting, they're not getting a full meal each day. You know, they're getting a little tortilla or, you know, a little bite of hit this and that. So the first couple of weeks, none of them could eat their food. Huh. It took them, took them a couple of weeks of us trying to get them to, to eat it, to be able to stomach it down. Um, but now we've got a few that's coming back for seconds. Of course we make enough for all 60 kids to come back for seconds, but it's, so still not there yet. Still not back there. But yeah, um, it just shows that they, you know, how they um, struggled um, really bad during this time because um, all their parents lost their jobs, of course, and um, just living. They live day to day, anyways. Um, but we've also been during the lockdown. The only ministry aspect that we could do was um, deliver food to homes. So we would take. Um, we would bag up food bags, um, and that's five pounds of rice, five pounds of black beans, five pounds of sugar, um, three pounds of uh, oatmeal, dried oatmeal, um, oil, um, salt, and a couple other things. We would bag all, all that up in a, in a large bag, and um, we have 124 right now that we're delivering each every two weeks. And that's what we've been doing since uh, March uh, is delivering those. So we buy every two weeks, I buy all that food. It comes to my house and we unload it. And then my family, uh, I had to let seven employees go after three months of us being in quarantine. Um, and uh, so we only have two employees right now. Um, which is making it tough. But uh, my family would bag up the food and um, we have our list and we throw it in the back of the truck. And my son was a huge help um, because he couldn't go to school either. Um, he was doing online classes. And um, so he would, he's strong now. He's 16 years old, six <laughs> foot four. I say he's huge, and man. 200 and, 218 pounds. He's a big boy. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, he's he's been a huge help and a blessing to us. Um, loves the ministry. Uh, um, so that's another part of the ministry that we're still doing right now. Um, we actually got uh, we just got finished with delivering this week um, for the two week period, and um, right now we're also working on. We always do little construction projects here and there. Some of them are is entire houses for families. Um, you wouldn't call it a house. You would call it a shed uh, or a garage, but it's a, it's a house for them. And they feel like it's a house that you guys would build and it's your new home. You know, your $300,000 house to them, you know, that's their little shack is their $300,000 house. So yeah. it's, it's a blessing for them to receive that. Um, but right now we're working on, uh, we're finishing up a school that we're building two classrooms. Um, down in the county of Santa Rosa, which is about an hour and a half away from here on the coast. Um, I've been working with that group um, for about a year now, a little over a year, um, but the Bible is not there. There is no churches there. So this is a huge opportunity working with that school um, to be able to open up the doors for ministry and to take groups, mission teams down there and to minister to these folks in this poor area. Um, so we're working on that. I'm also working a lot with the police station here, our local police station, um, because of course it wasn't closed, you know, during quarantine, they're still operating. So uh, uh, that's just a part of the ministry I was able to go do. Um, and during the quarantine time, um, one of the captains had asked me if I would come by and pray for them each morning before that shift went out. So that opened just a, a gigantic door to present the gospel. Um, most of them are Catholic, some of them don't have religions. A few of them are, are, have 
Christian background, but not many. Um, but it just opened a, a huge door to be able to pray for them each day, um, to encourage them and talk to them. Um, there's a lot of corrupt police officers. So to smile and to be able to encourage them um, is a huge plus. I took, um, one day I took donuts, uh-huh. donuts to the cops, you know. Yeah. Uh, that, I went to Dunkin' Donuts and I bought uh, six dozen donuts and uh, took it to them and they were all smiles and you could see them going down in their trucks eating donuts. <laughs> so, so we won't, maybe we'll get into the story, maybe not. So next time they arrest you, you won't, uh, you, you'll, you'll know them to get out. Huh? That's right. Yeah, That's right. First, I got phone the first I got phone time number now. Now, Danny got arrested. <laughs> it was a complete accident. But Well, here in Guatemala, <laughs> it's not the United States. So here you are always guilty uh-huh. until proven innocent in anything yeah. that happens. Yeah. So anytime there's a vehicle accident and someone is injured, you are arrested until... Sorry you're proven so yeah, yeah might as well share what happened that way people don't think you did something <laughs> something illegal we the first time down we came to visit and we were pulling out of a gas station and a guy came around the corner really quickly on his motorcycle and yeah. uh, ran into danny's jeep uh it was cherokee I, something like that yeah it's an old jeep cherokee yeah yeah and uh so he hit this jeep cherokee and went flying off of his motorcycle and um and we tended to him um you know you did what you could to kind of help him out and so forth thankfully he was i think broke maybe his arm or something yeah broke his arm yeah so i mean thankfully besides that he was relatively okay but you were his you were accused of stealing stuff out of his backpack stealing money out of his backpack you're a gringo you know (laughs) with a bunch of other gringos so yeah they were trying to basically uh the, the the police were trying to extort you um, yeah. and so we went back to the mission house and you went to jail and we, we had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't either. Yeah. <laughs> first, that was my first year here. I had, <laughs> I was clueless. Yeah. But I was, yeah, I was detained for five and a half hours. Yeah. Yeah. What a fun experience, but, um, it's just, it's definitely a different country and, um, I've learned a lot since then, of course, uh, but, but yeah, I have a lot of friends in the police department now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear you've done that. Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, they're, uh, you know, I've, I've never asked anything of them, but they, they've they always told me anytime, you know, I can give them a call and they, they would be be here um, really quick. So Good. I, nice to know. <laughs> it's nice to know. <laughs> now. <laughs> It takes a little bit of time to get to know people that you need to know. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Good. so um, one of the things I, I'll say this, and I'll ask you just what you enjoy most. You know, I've been down there a couple of times with you now, I think three times. You're about to come down a fourth uh, before COVID. It was the week before that, yep. the pandemic hit the United States. Um, and we, we had to cancel. Our group had to cancel. Uh, uh, and thankfully we did because we would have got stuck down there. Um, we and and not with you, but which would have been fine. We would, we could have lived with that, but we likely would have got stuck in the airport or in somewhere else where we would not want to be long term. Right. Um, but one of the things I enjoy about bringing groups down and, and why I try to get people to come down from our church or even other churches when I hear they've gone down, my uh, in laws come down uh, as often as they can. Um, is because of the way you do ministry and, and I like the I like people to see that um, you are somebody who you you take serving people and caring for the poor um, uh, and they're hurting very seriously while at the same time you also take sharing the gospel very seriously like it's not just one or the other for you and I feel like in the American church, it's kind of become that in a lot of ways. Now, not always. I mean, even in some of our missions and missionaries, the way that we are doing missions now, foreign missions in general, I feel like it's kind of one or the other. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes there is just a ministry of the word, right? If you are, uh, if you're a pastor, I mean, you're primarily ministering, teaching the word. It's not that you don't go do things and to help people or help build a house right. or 
organizing a feeding center or whatever that's where that that happens um and should happen um or you know um the opposite would be true like other people just doing a feeding center or whatever but you do both and you challenge you challenge people who come down to be a part of your ministry to do both right. um you know people who are are building the house aren't just going to build the house you're going to ask them to share why they built that house for them yeah. um you know you're going to ask them to share christ or to pray or you know to connect them with the local church or the local ministry and uh i love that because i think that's what all ministry should look like to a certain degree um i think it's hard to have one without the other uh or to ignore the other and so i, I like that people see that i think it encourages people uh, i think it challenges people too because i think a lot of us right we just want to do one or the other right um so that's what I enjoy about coming to see you and, and to be with you and, and about your ministry and, and why I want to always get people down to you just so they can see that. I'm always hoping they'll just duplicate it in their own life somehow or, or want our church to duplicate it in different ways. So that's what I enjoy about being with you uh, besides just, you know, getting to see you and, and hang out with you. Um, but what do you enjoy most about your ministry and kind of what you do? Well, this will tie into that, but I'll kind of respond to what you what you just said. Um, you know, I've always felt very strongly, especially after living here um, the first year, that we have to build solid relationships and friends. Not, um, especially in this culture that we're in. You know, cultures are different everywhere in the world, even in the United States. Different, you know, Ohio and Alabama is completely yeah. different. <laughs> And different parts of Guatemala are, um, but I truly believe in, in the model of Jesus, you know, as he walked, um, was to minister to the, the poor widows and um, give what he could and, and how he can and, and to build relationships. You know, he didn't only um, tell Matthew, the tax collector, to follow him. He went to his house and ate that, you know, sat down and ate with him. And so we really, we really believe in relationship building. And that means going into their homes and taking an hour, two hours, three hours. Um, it's a very different culture here. So they're, they're very relaxed people. There is no time. Um, you know, Josh can attest to that. Go to so, church service, right? <laughs> I mean, you go and see it. We're all we're always wanting to jump up and go do something else, but we have to slow down, relax, sit down on their bed, you know, wherever they offer for us to sit, and just talk and build that relationship. And once you build a friendship and a relationship with them, where they can trust you, because remember, I am a gringo. Um, they have to to trust me and know that I'm not um, there just to do something and, and make a promise and leave and never come back. Um, it's very important to build that trust and to keep that trust. And then I can share the gospel. I can talk about God and we do not push over push overstep our boundaries. Um, we've seen examples here where um, even some groups, you know, in the very beginning would come and they would be preaching at um, a Catholic girl you know yelling at her preaching at her you have to accept christ well she disappeared for two years we never saw her mm -hmm. you know it took two years for her to come back and slowly come to my youth group again and she finally accepted christ you know on her own terms and went to church and her whole family is that was catholic are now going to church but it's a, a <laughs> it's a slow process and um we have to do what god has called us to do to share the word, um, to share his light. A lot of times we can do that without preaching to somebody though, um, you know, especially with the Catholic background. Um, and they will see, you know, if you're doing what Jesus has called you to do, they will eventually, you know, hopefully they should see the light of Christ in you and want to have what you have. What makes you happy? You know, what, what gives you peace? And they're, they're looking for that because they're looking for hope that they don't have. 
And that's just, we've seen countless visits where then I have the, you know, after several visits, I have an opportunity to open up and say, hey, do you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ? And, you know, and I can talk to them freely in that sense. Um, and when teams come down, I try to give teams the opportunity to do that. Uh, um, I always, um, when we're doing house visits, we do a lot of, of house visits because that's so important to our ministry. Um, so we, I, there's a team in a house and we're sharing with the lady and I, I will give an opportunity. I'll open up an opportunity if someone feels that they need to share something, that God's telling them to share something or to pray. Um, we never pressure anybody and tell them you have to. I'll only give you about three or four seconds and then I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to start sharing it because I don't like pause time. But, uh, you know, that's how we give the opportunity. And we've seen a lot of, uh, mission teams come down and they've never shared their testimony in their life. You know, they've never shared um, about their childhood, even to their friends that's with them, hmm. you know, about their abuse situation or about their alcoholic um, family or, um, or how they accepted Christ, you know, when their parents wasn't Christians or, or whatever, different examples of, what the people are telling us, what the Guatemalan people are, are talking to us about. And it's just, I've, I see those mission team people change, you know, and that's, that's what I like the most to answer that question is, well, what I like the most is playing with the kids here. But, yeah. uh, but when teams come, it's, it's seeing them do almost a 360 in their relationship and in their walk with Christ. Because they come here thinking they're in good, good standards and they're doing the right thing. And, but when you actually dig in and do stuff that's out of your comfort zone and share your story or pray over a family publicly or you know, hold a little child's hand or a, put your arm around a, an old man that's, you know, that's lost his leg from something and you're praying for him, it does something to you. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's, I, I love to see that. Um, I love to hear those people and keep those connections for years to come. And they always, you know, they'll send me a message or, um, or even call and say, Hey man, you know, when can I come again? I, you know, I, I need to get re-energized. I need to get my batteries boosted again. And it's just a blessing to, to know that this ministry is is completely of God and that God's in control. Um, we always have to stop, you know, every day I have to, it's not me, you know, I gotta, I gotta put myself on hold and um, because we can, we want to do a lot of things. We want to help a lot of people, but is that what God wants? You know, is that his will for me today? So we have to always stop and, and pause and say, talk to God first, you know, Hey, you know, is this what you, is this what you want us to do? Cause I don't want I don't need to be doing it just to make me feel good. And that's where, you know, we really need to get mission teams to understand um, that come down is it's not about them. It's not about them feeling good. It's not about them helping people. Um, it's about them sharing a relationship with Christ with the Guatemalan people as brothers and sisters in Christ, because we're all one body. Hmm. Um, and, and hopefully through that, we'll, we'll come across some that don't know Christ and they'll accept Christ through that experience. So that's, that's my favorite. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> that's awesome. And you express that when, when people are there. Yeah. Um, and I see it, uh, the way you treat the kids, you know, you talked about the Guatemalan kids being some of your favorite, you know, you walk the streets down there with you and all the kids, Danny, 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 Danny. Um, it's just, it's just funny to watch and you're giving them hugs and kisses and all those sorts of things. And so it doesn't, uh, or it didn't surprise me, um, uh, when I heard you had COVID, <laughs> It's like, well, this that doesn't surprise me at all. Danny, Danny knows everybody and he's giving everybody hugs and kisses. And I, I had a feeling that COVID wasn't going to slow you down too yeah. much. Um, 
And so here's just a fun question for people if they are listening, they're going to watch this. What was it like having COVID? And what was it like having COVID in Guatemala with uh, uh, the yeah. uh, that, That's a tough system. one. It was, uh, yeah. it was rough. Um, of course, just being here in Guatemala and, you know, we've been here almost 10 years now, but it's, it's still not my Alabama and my family and, and my church um, and my pastor there. So to be quarantined and not be able to leave and not know when you're going to be able to leave and not know how long this is going to last um, and no mission teams coming down, you know, we didn't get any visits. Our last visit was February. Yeah. Uh, and we had 13 trips planned after February. And all of them canceled. They had to. Yeah. And so it was very, very lonely for my family. We didn't have church until um, we've had church for four weeks now. We weren't allowed to have church. So um, we did online church, but, you know, you're getting some Bible, but it's not the relationships and it's not church. Church is the body. And we needed that relationships. So it was very, very tough to not have anybody plus we're used to kids coming in here every day. No kids were allowed to come in. No employees were allowed to come through our door. So that was that was very um, lonely and and you know mentally tough, challenging on my entire family. Um, and then uh, you know around June we we did get the virus um, because I were I was I was still going out and making these food deliveries that I was doing. And I was also going to, um, I would see notices in Antigua about a certain family needs help um, because they, they have the virus. Um, they don't have any medicine, any vitamins, um, any means of anything. Some needed nebulizers. I have two nebulizers here. So I would um, bag my stuff up, put my mask on and my gloves, and I would go to their house, knock on their door, and walk in and sit down on our bed and, and treat them and get them the medicines that they needed. I would go to the pharmacy and buy more medicine, you know, whatever, um, tons of vitamins and a few antibiotics. And So um, what's your medical, degree? where do you get your medical degree, medical degree from? I'm a, I was a basic EMT, so I'm just a <laughs> medic. I've also seen you pull teeth when I've been down there. <laughs> well, I've become a doctor. You're so also a dentist. <laughs> there's no degree there. <laughs> <laughs> keep going though uh, no, keep going but uh yeah i haven't pulled any teeth during the virus i told okay. no. Okay. I, I said no to everybody yeah. um but uh that's probably where you know i obtained i obtained the sorry about that i obtained the virus um and the only one there's five of us in my family my wife and i and my son brayden and my my daughter Dami and my other daughter brianna Brianna is the only one that didn't have any symptoms at all. Um, but we're, we're pretty sure she had it because, you know, asymptomatic or whatever. Um, my, my daughter, Dami, she's a Guatemalan. She had a, a fever and headache. Uh, my son just had like cold symptoms. Um, Kim, my wife, um, had some throat and chest pain. Um, lot just super tired and that's how I was too I was super exhausted you know um, and then I had a lot of respiratory issues I couldn't I struggled breathing like really bad <laughs> so that part you know you're in another country and you've had to go to the hospital in another country right I've been right hospitalized here. in Guatemala I not yeah. with you the, the first time yeah. I came to Guatemala yeah I was hospitalized. So, I got real sick when I was with you the first time yes you got me some magical medicine or whatever that they do not we don't sick. we do not go to the doctor here yeah it's we never have um so we knew plus everybody that was at the doc at the hospitals were dying here we had a lot of cases. A lot of doctors were dying. Um, you're getting more exposed. Um, so we knew we just had to, if we got it, and when we got it, we were just going to have to ride it out here. Um, we can't, you know, magically jump on a plane and take off. There is no plane. You know? So uh, we just had to trust and pray. Um, talk to a couple people that had had it here, friends of missionaries of ours, and that helped um, just for, hey, 
you know, I had to, there was a couple of days I had to call one, two days in a row. I was like, are you sure this is the same symptoms you had? You know? <laughs> it was an elephant standing on your chest the whole time. <laughs> you know? So, uh, uh, but after we got through it, um, you know, we were happy. Um, we felt a lot better. Um, lasted about, main symptoms lasted about two weeks. It got the worst about day seven was probably the worst day for it. Um, felt the worst. Um, but just laid in bed, slept a lot. Wasn't nothing else to do at the time anyways. We were in lockdown. So um, we quarantined for about, I think it was a total of 21 days ourselves. We didn't, because that's something we were always worried about um, is spreading it to the kids here. You know, when we go out, because they are very malnourished and they don't get vitamins like we did. They don't have food like we get. So when I'm going out to deliver food and stuff, we were trying to be very careful um, about wearing a mask. And we even wore gloves for a long time. Um, now we're just doing mask. Um, I'm not a true, true mask believer, but I do it for other people. Yeah. Plus because it's a law here. <laughs> um, you know the police now, so you should be good. But I, I can't breathe in the daggum things myself. I feel yeah. worse when I wear them. Yeah. But, um, but I do it for others. And uh, it's important to, for their safety, for sure. Um, there was about, I would say, probably 25% of our town at one time had the virus. Wow. Um, I know of two people, two neighbors. Um, one was 30 and the other one was like 32 men, healthy men, as far as they looked, that died, um, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's definitely, definitely was tough in this area. Um, I was really worried about, about the people here um, during that time because they didn't have jobs. They didn't have food. Um, they were having to go out when they weren't supposed to, to try to find food. Um, some of them were stealing, you know, to, to make a living, you know, to have food for their, for their children. You know, it's, uh, you get desperate. Yeah. Um, so, um, it was very tough right now. It's eased up a lot. Um, things are opening up. Um, everybody's still wearing masks here. Um, but you're seeing a lot of people, you know, on top of each other in huddles and, um, not social distancing, but we're not, we're not having many cases. Like, uh, I know you guys in Ohio and most other States are starting to see an increase, a fall increase in the virus. We haven't seen that yet. Ours is still down where, it, you know, we're not having many cases. And yeah. we're not hearing the same with what I'm seeing in the U.S. is we're not hearing as many deaths as before. Yeah. So um, my prayer is, you know, the virus has mutated some and it's not as bad as it was. Yeah. So, but uh, you don't want it if you haven't had it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of people are getting it right now. So try, and yeah. try not to. Well, um, we'll wrap this thing up here. How, how can people pray for you, Danny? Right now, um, you know, we're, we've got several parts of the ministry that is still not operating because of uh, the restrictions and because of the virus and safety issues. Um, so just wisdom, of course, wisdom from God to um, – for us to take our baby steps needed to get back where we need to be in the ministry. Um, we are, you know, daily we're, we're working hard because there's only three of us that's working right now. Uh, me and my wife and, and Carlos. So uh, we have a lot to do, um, but we don't have the means to hire other people right now. We have 220 students for our school and uh, we're, we're closing out the year and trying to start a new year for them. And it's very, very, very difficult to go visit all these kids and find out how they're doing in school and get them signed up for next year. Um, so just pray for, um, for strength and wisdom, you know, for us to, to do what God's called us to do. Um, we got several teams already planned for this next year that's coming. Um, pray that the virus stays. <laughs> mm -hmm stays back and we can have some teams, some visits. So I was going to say, is that something that's possible for the next year? Oh yeah. Yeah, 
as of right now, you have to have a, uh, a test 72 hours before you get here. Okay. Uh, but it can be the antigen test, the, the rapid test. Um, our, our prayer and hope is that about January that they won't have to do that anymore. You know, hopefully that'll, that'll knock off, but we do have teams. We have, uh, I think five teams already scheduled oh, wow. starting in, starting in June. Okay. Um, so yeah, we got some June, July and one August right now. Okay. Well, so maybe we'll have to start having some conversations with some people in our, our congregation, to see what we can do. Yeah. I'd love to see you guys. Yeah. Man. Sure. We're on sabbatical actually this summer, so I know for me it'd probably have to be sometime in the spring if we're able to pull it off, or personally, or fall next year. But yeah, I, I'd love to come down. We still got we got a plane ticket to use right now because oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, we we got credited all of that, so okay, that's where we're at with that. Well, hopefully people will take time to pray for you and your family and um, what you're up to, and then. Uh, if people want to give to you directly, Los, lopezmissions.com, there's a place they can do that there. Right. Yeah. Um, we uh, use a, a, also use a system called Ministry Tracker. Okay. Um, that you can do online giving there. Um, and then we have an address if you want to send a check, you know, always. But it's, yeah. I think both of those are on our, our website's not up to date. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, I think that's on there. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can always send us an email or a, a Facebook message as well. Yeah. Okay, good. I know. So for our church, if you want to give through our church, you can go to our website at firstchurchtalmage.com and give to our faith promise and, um, all money through faith promise goes to missions giving. So anybody who's interested in doing that, I encourage them to do that, but yeah, learn more about Danny through lopezmissions.com. I know, um, you're also on Facebook. Uh, Danny Lopez, and then um, we have a ministry page. You have a ministry page, which is what? Buena Vista. Yeah. Okay. And so people can go and, and check. Yeah, and check you out there. Um, yeah. I appreciate you taking you time to, to talk to me. Yeah. I'm gonna come up there sometime. You should. I love will. That. Yeah. I will. Bring, bring the family. Yeah, we would love to. My mom's from Ohio, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. What part? Steubenville. Yeah. Steubenville. Okay. Yeah. Um, our uh, West uh, Virginia line. Yeah, we have a retired pastor in our church, John Majeski, who keeps trying to get a, he's been trying to get a Church of God church off the ground there in Steubenville. That's where he grew up, and that's where he's from. Okay. He just okay. celebrated 50 years in ministry, and he is, his ministry down there has primarily been uh, – ministry to the the poor take, he takes food down um every week and uh, helps you actually no, so i don't know if you remember her jeanette who came with us yeah you i mean we had a group we had a fairly large group and we came with a group uh, alabama too but yeah his daughter came down his daughter was with our group okay um and uh so yeah no steubenville straight down 77 from here yeah well i'm gonna yeah, I'm going to push pause here on the recording and then we will stay on here. But I want to thank people for listening and um, yeah, make sure you pray for Danny as, as you get done listening to this.